Hi, everyone. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Mark Andrew James, and if I can get anyone a glass of wine while we're talking, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for coming. Um, I'm an assistant professor of applied linguistics at Arizona State University, and in today's presentation, I'm going to talk for exactly 20 minutes uh, about one of the studies that I've worked on recently on the topic of transfer of learning in second language writing education. And then we'll have some time for questions. I'm going to stick pretty close to, to my notes so that I make sure that we have, have time there. Okay. Um, this study is part of a line of research that I've been doing on the topic of learning transfer. My interest in this topic stems from a basic question. I teach university-level ESL writing courses, and I wonder, <clears throat> when students learn things in my university uh, uh, courses, do they apply those things in their other academic courses? Um, I suspect that many teachers can relate to this question, since a fundamental goal of these kinds of courses is that they will lead to learning outcomes that students will apply in their other courses. In other words, the goal is learning transfer. But one potential hurdle to this goal is differences that can exist between ESL writing courses and other academic courses. Researchers have suggested, for example, that if tasks differ too much between uh, these contexts, students won't make the connections that are necessary for successful transfer to occur. And one way that we may see a major difference is in the use of source texts for writing tasks. Ilona Lecky and Joan Carson pointed out that ESL writing courses hold students responsible for the content of a source text much less frequently than other academic courses do. In other words, in an ESL course, students may be writing about personal experiences, while in their other academic courses, they are being required to write about things uh, that they have read in specific texts. This kind of mismatch means that students have to bridge a relatively large gap in order to apply learning outcomes from the ESL writing course in their other courses. In other words, this kind of situation indicates that there's an expectation, either explicit or implicit, for far transfer of learning outcomes. The problem is that even near transfer of learning outcomes, which involves tax, tasks and contexts that are very similar, is not inevitable and can be very difficult to stimulate. Far transfer of learning outcomes, involving tasks and contexts that are very different is less common and even more difficult to stimulate. So with that conceptual framework in mind, I developed a study to try to answer two research questions. One, will learning outcomes from an ESL writing course transfer to a writing task with characteristics very different from the kind of writing done in the ESL writing course, but typical of the kind of writing required in other uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, academic courses? Um, in other words, involving text-responsible writing. And number two, can learning transfer in this situation be promoted by asking students to look for similarities between the writing task and the ESL writing course? To answer these questions, I carried out a study in the fall semester of 2006 with university students enrolled in a freshman ESL writing course. Uh, 30 students participated, and most of them were in the first year of their programs. As this slide illustrates, there was variation in their gender, nationality, and major areas of study. The ESL writing course that these participants were enrolled in was a one-semester, three-credit freshman course. The participants came from four sections of this course, and although these sections were taught by four different instructors, the sections had important similarities in terms of their goal, the number and nature of the main course assignments, and the textbook. I gathered data over a two-week period just after the middle of the semester. Each of the students completed individually three tasks, uh, a 40-minute writing task, a 15-minute interview, and a one-page background questionnaire. The writing task was designed to be text responsible, which meant that the students had to first read a short article and then write about what they had read. And here's an excerpt from the one-page article that I used. As you can see, this article was on the topic uh, biotechnology. I chose this topic because I thought it would be very different from topics that students typically wrote about in the ESL writing course. And therefore, it would enhance students' perceptions of the differences between this task and work in their writing course. The article was about 450 words long, about a page, just under a page. Um, and just below the article, at the bottom of the page, the following was written. Questions. What is thermophilic anaerobic digestion? And this was uh, something that was specified in the article, of course. Um, why is it an important biotechnology? 
And then the parenthetical uh, statement, demonstrate your understanding by describing and discussing this phenomenon. The students were given several sheets of blank paper on which to write their responses. So that was the general structure of the writing task. But there was one more important aspect of this task. Um, to shed light on the second research question, I had to look at the impact of prompting students to look for similarities between this writing task and work that they did in the ESL writing course. So, so once I had a complete list of all the students who were interested in participating in this study, I divided them into two groups. And those groups were comparable in terms of student major and current grade in the ESL writing course. And I planned to ask the students in one group uh, to do the following before, right before they started the writing task. I asked the students in this group to take a quick look at the writing task and write down four similarities between this task and work that they did in their ESL writing course. I went over these instructions uh, with the students verbally and asked them to give me one example of a similarity, just orally, uh, to make sure that they understood what I was asking them to do. I stressed that they should complete the rest of this before they moved on to the main part of the writing task. The students in the other group, of course, did not have to do this pre-writing task. Um, the interview was the same for all students and focused on whether or not the students had tried to use learning outcomes from the ESL writing course when they did the writing task. The one-page background questionnaire, of course, was also the same for all the students. And there was one more step in the data collection. Besides those three research tasks, I also collected from each student a copy of the most recent graded assignment that they had completed in the ESL writing course. That assignment was a three to four page essay about a significant person in the student's past. Data analysis involved two steps, uh, two main steps. First, I and another rater scored each piece of writing independently for the use of 15 writing strategies, which I chose because they had been focused on in the course textbook. Of these 15 strategies, six were related to content, five were related to organization, and four were related to language use. We scored the writing for the use of these strategies by using a four-point scale that I developed. And I'll show, I'll show you an example of that here. Um, this, is, this is one of the strat one of the 15 strategies, and this strategy is using connectives. Um, as you can see, uh, if the writing did not, if the writing that we were looking at did not include any connectives, a score of one was given. A score of two was given for minimal use, three for moderate use, and four for extensive use. The four-point scales for the other 14 writing strategies were similar to this one, uh, in the sense that they all were meant to give an indication of the extent of use. Um, from no use to extensive or thorough use of a particular strategy. I averaged my, score, my scores and the other raters' scores for all of the subsequent statistical analyses. I also calculated the correlation between our scores, which was, which was strong at 0.97, average correlation. The second step in the data analysis involved coding the transcripts from the interviews with the students. I was interested in identifying instances of intentional transfer. In other words, seeing whether the, whether the students reported having tried to use any learning outcomes from the ESL writing course when they did the writing task. So I broke the transcripts into units of analysis and then grouped these units of analysis into categories based on thematic similarities. To check the reliability of this procedure, um, I asked another researcher to code about 20% of the transcripts using the list of categories that I had used and the degree of agreement with uh, my coding decisions was acceptable, just under 90%. Um, so now we'll take a look at how I used these different kinds of data to answer the research questions. This is the, the first research question again. Did learning outcomes from the ESL writing course transfer to the writing task? And the next two slides will summarize the findings for this question. In terms of the interview data, as you can see here, almost half of the students said that they had tried to use learning outcomes from the ESL writing course to do, to do the writing task. Um, interestingly, this didn't include only writing strategies. Some of the students said that they had developed reading strategies in the ESL writing course, and they had used these when doing the writing task. So the total number of, 30, uh, of the total number of 30 participants, actually only 7, or, or just under 25%, uh, said that they tried to use writing strategies from the ESL writing course to do this writing task. 
Um, you can see an example on this slide of how students actually reported this in the interviews. And in terms of intentional transfer of learning outcomes then, uh, we can say that while it did occur, it was obviously limited. As for the writing sample data, this table shows the students' use of, 15, of the 15 writing strategies that I was interested in. Um, I apologize for the font being small, but I, I, I thought it would be better to put the whole table on one slide to give you an overview of what I was trying to do rather than to divide it up. And, and you've got this data on your handout so you can take a closer look at it if you like afterwards. Anyway, with these 15 um, strategies in the first column, we see the 15 strategies. Uh, we have scores in the second column for the uh, ESL writing course assignment. We have scores in the third column for the writing task. And the fourth column shows, um, uh, tells us if the scores in columns two and three are significantly different or not. So based on the way that I had designed the study, I expected that writing strategies would be used less on the writing task than they had been on the ESL writing course assignment. And with this in mind, the pattern that emerged in this table is kind of interesting. As you can see here, my expectations were partially met in the sense that seven of the 15 writing strategies were in fact used significantly less on the writing task than they had been used on the ESL writing course assignment. Those strategies were um, stating personal significance, describing, exemplifying, comparing, contrasting, uh, using introduction and conclusion, uh, using connectives, and using cohesive devices. This, combined with what we saw on the previous slide about the limited intentional transfer, um, suggests that while far transfer of learning outcomes did occur, the transfer was constrained. What's also interesting in this table, though, is what happened with the other writing strategies. As you can see here, four of the writing strategies, colored green, were used significantly more on the writing task than they had been on the ESL uh, writing course assignment. And that leaves four other strategies for which there were no significant differences in use. So for about half of the writing strategies, the ones colored green and the ones with no color, far transfer of learning outcomes did not seem to be a problem. And this, of course, begs the question of why some writing strategies may have transferred more, re more readily than others. One possibility has to do with the general category of writing strategy. Strategies 1 through 6 were related to content, 7 through 11 to organization, and 12 through 15 to language use. The majority of the strategies related to content and organization were, were used less on the writing task than they had been on the ESL writing course assignment. But none of the strategies related to language use were used less on the writing task than they had been in the, on the ESL writing course assignment. So it may be the case that the writing strategies associated with language use were actually less sensitive to task differences and therefore were more likely to transfer than writing strategies associated with content and organization. Um, another possible answer has to do with the nature of the writing task instructions. Of the 11 writing strategies related to content and organization, the two that were used significantly more on the writing task than they had been on the ESL writing course assignment were defining, number five, and using logical organization, number eight. In the writing task prompt, there had been an explicit question asking the students what thermophilic anaerobic digestion was. And as you might imagine, many of the students answered this question by using the strategy of defining. Also, the writing task prompt included two bulleted questions. Many of the students used a logical sequence in their responses by setting up their responses uh, in, a in a manner, a two-section manner that paralleled these, uh, these bullets. So the students' use of these two strategies may have been stimulated by the content and structure of the instructions that were immediately in front of them. So those were the findings related to the first research question. Um, we'll move on now and look at the findings for the second research question. And here's the question again. Was learning transfer promoted by asking students to look for similarities between the writing task and the ESL writing course? And the next two slides summarize the findings for this question. As for the interview data, I compared the two groups of students, uh, those who had been asked to look for task similarities at the beginning of the writing task and those who had not been asked to do, to do this, um, I compared these groups for their reported learning transfer from the ESL writing course to the writing task. A chi-square test showed that there were no differences between these groups. So in terms of intentional transfer, the, the prompting that half of the students had received to identify task similarities had no impact. 
As for the writing sample data, this table summarizes the results. And again, this is particularly dense, but uh, I'm just going to give you an overview, and this is also on your handout. Um, basically, I just compared the two groups of students for their use of the 15 writing strategies on the ESL writing course assignment and on the writing task. I expected that the performance on the ESL writing course assignment for both groups would be comparable. Um, but that the group that had been asked to look for similarities on the writing task uh, would use writing strategies more extensively on that task than the group that had not been asked to look for similarities. Unfortunately, that's not what the results showed. With all of these comparisons, the only, there was only one significant difference. That means that for the other 14 strategies, the two groups had performed comparably on the ESL writing course assignment and on the writing task. So with those 14 strategies, asking one group to look for task similarities did not lead to more use of the strategy. With the 15th strategy, here in blue, uh, comparing and contrasting, um, group two students had used this strategy significantly more on the ESL writing course assignment than group one students had. But on the writing task, the significant difference disappeared, suggesting that group one students, um, in a way, caught up to group two students. This individual result is difficult to interpret because it's uh, so out of line with the rest of the strategies. But looking at the general pattern, I think it makes sense to conclude that the result for this particular strategy may have been influenced by a floor effect um, of the four-point rating scale. In other words, there was a significant difference between these groups on the uh, ESL writing course assignment, and the significant difference may have, um, between them may have disappeared on the writing task because one group basically hit the bottom of the rating scale. Both groups dropped, but one hit the bottom. So with this in mind, my conclusion was that asking students to look for task similarities had no impact on far transfer of learning outcomes here. That's it for the specific findings uh, as they related to the two research questions. To summarize, the evidence here indicates that far transfer of learning outcomes did occur from the ESL writing course, but it was constrained. Some students tried to, look to use learning outcomes from the ESL writing course to do, to do this writing task, but others did not. Also, we could see from an analysis of the writing samples that some of the 15 writing strategies transferred quite readily, particularly those related to language use and those hinted at in the task instructions. But other writing strategies, in fact, the majority of the writing strategies related to content and organization, uh, did not transfer so readily. Finally, there's evidence here that asking students to look for task similarities did not stimulate far transfer of learning outcomes. And I think these findings point in some interesting directions. I, I, I um, won't be able to go over all of them here, but um, for example, second language writing practitioners may be both encouraged by the finding that far transfer of learning outcomes can occur from an ESL writing course, for example, um, and feel cautious because of the finding that this trans because of the finding that this transfer is by no means inevitable. Second language writing researchers, on the other hand, may be interested in examining how far learning outcomes from a second language writing course will actually transfer. Or in taking a closer look at the possible differences from a learning transfer perspective between writing strategies related to language use, organization, and content. And researchers and practitioners might both be interested in the question of whether far transfer of learning outcomes can, in fact, be stimulated. Um, in this study, asking students to look for task similarities did not do the trick. But there are many other ways that transfer might be stimulated, for example, with various uh, teaching for transfer techniques. And we can read about those in the literature. Uh, the findings in this study have filled in some of the picture, but there's a lot more that can be done to build our understanding of this important topic. And that's it for me. We have a little Thank bit of time for questions. Um, there is time for questions. Yes. Do you Good question, no. Um, not, not beyond the, uh, I took a close look at the textbook. All four sections used the same textbook. Um, but I didn't uh, spend any time in class observing. Um, so I had to make some assumptions about, uh, you know, when I was deciding what strategies to focus on, I thought about different ways that I could choose strategies, you know, for this, for this analysis, and decided that because I was looking across several sections taught by different people, um, the best way for this study, and I'm, doing, I'm thinking of doing this in some, some different ways in the future, the best way for this study was to just focus on the textbook, because that's something that all, all four sections had in common. I assumed that all students had the textbook, 
it's not necessarily the case, but I assume that they did. Uh, they all have access to the textbook. They can, you know, uh, they can they can read it in their own time. Things like that. So, uh, but beyond that, no, I don't know. Yeah, good question. No, it, and, and it's, it's an important question, and uh, this is something. This is part of a line of, of research that I'm doing on the topic. And in fact, this semester, I'm I'm in the middle now of, da of data collection involving going into into writing classes to watch to watch what's happening and to try to identify uh, strategies that are being used that might fit the sort of description of teaching for transfer strategies. Um, and uh, that will eventually lead to then maybe looking at you know some experiments where I can see which ones might lead to transfer um, more, more than others. Exactly, yeah. That's important, yeah. Good question. Yeah, we always hope whatever we do in the class may affect something similar. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, given your, your results uh, and given that you teach writing, and you thought about these results, how we, how I'm thinking about how you might change your writing or what modifications you might change for the writing course? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been um, thinking about, you know, teaching for learning transfer in the ESL writing courses that I teach for a few years. Um, one of the things that I uh, experimented with, uh, and I don't have any answers yet, but one of the things that I experimented with um, just this last year was um, making my freshman uh, ESL writing course uh, content-based. Um, I have done that in the past in other situations. This, this was a particularly challenging situation because the students were from all over campus, all over different disciplines. And uh, so I used, uh, I had to find some content that could be used uh, to, uh, to make the course content-based. My idea was that if, if it's a content-based course, I can challenge the students. Uh, well, it fits with this whole text-responsible writing idea. You know, they're going to be reading articles rather than just practicing uh, writing strategies uh, with topics that they choose themselves. Um, they're going to be reading articles in class with me uh, and writing writing about those things. So, um, and that, that seemed to work pretty well. Um, but, so, but again, I, I don't have any uh, firm answers about this yet. And I, I, I haven't, um, with that, with my own uh, class uh, and that content-based approach, I haven't uh, followed up to see if transfer actually happens. That would be the next step, is to teach a course like that and then to see what actually happens in the students' other classes. So I think that's sort of down the line a little bit, but yeah. I found this very interesting. I also work mostly uh, with teachers that uh, teach elementary children, and, and, and something similar happens in the sense that in elementary, they use the, the genre of personal narrative ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. And so when the kids are required to write from going from chronological to logical organization, right. they have a, a horrible time. Mm -hmm. So. I think what you have to say is very important that we have to be more conscious about yeah. that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I did, this is one study. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a few others uh, last year and this year as well. I talked to a lot of students in this context, and the, the message keeps coming back again and again through interviews and, and, and uh, things that I'm doing like this, that the students have trouble making these connections, and, and some of it has to do with the, the kind of writing that they're doing. That's what prompted uh, you know, the, the line of research that I'm on right now was um, you know teaching a freshman writing course where the students were doing a lot of personal writing. I came into the course, did the same thing that other instructors were doing, lots of personal writing, and the students were engineering majors and business majors, and um, they were telling me that this is just not helping them. I'm, I'm developing my writing skills for this kind of writing, but I don't see the relevance. I, I, don't, I can't use this stuff when I go and write a, a chemistry lab. So, and yet the goal of the course was to help students with writing they do across, across campus. So. Any other questions? I have a question for the audience. Oh, thank you very much, Francis. Thank you. Thank you.